Hello, in this video I'll be describing how you can configure your Fanatec Formula 1 wheel so you can use the two prime rotary encoders correctly within a Central Corsa Competizione. There are a number of controls on the Fanatec F1 wheels. Uh, there are two primary rotary encoders to the left and right of the wheel setting configuration. There are two funk wheels and the funky switch also has a rotation property. If you're just using Fanatec without Fanalabs, if you go into the wheel properties and look on the tuning menu tab, you'll find that there are settings at the bottom of that window by which you can set the configuration for the encoders. If you're using Fanalabs, the same settings can be found on the tuning menu again, uh, and you've got more help here because you have a little tooltip that pops up to describe. Auto will leave it in usually in encoding mode. I never use that. I always have the wheel set to encoder mode, as will be show, demonstrated later. You've got a constant setting, which is like holding your finger down on a key on the keyboard, and you've got pulse, and that's like tapping your finger continuously on a key on the keyboard. Within a set of course of competition, to get to the right screen, from the main window, if you go to options, And then if you select controls, you go into the right area of configuration. On the left hand side, you'll see where you can set up your steering, throttle, brake, clutch, and etc. inputs. Just below that, you've got an area where you can load and save profiles for your wheels, which can be quite useful. Uh, and once you've done this setup, I recommend you'd save it under your own preset name so you've got your mappings set in case there's ever any problems. In the center of the screen, you'll do your force feedback setups uh, for your wheel. They all vary from base to base. Now on the right hand side are the individual control map bindings. These are separated into three columns. The first column on the left is the wheel control bindings. The central column is for gamepad bindings and the right hand column is for keyboard bindings. We're interested in wheel bindings at this stage. As a handy uh, little reminder, if you're not sure whether a control on your wheel is already bound to a control, if you just activate it, it'll flash yellow and a little tooltip at the bottom will tell you what control that is mapped to at the moment. I'm using at the moment the phone wheel actually to change the dash page, so that's what's flashing yellow as I'm rotating the phone wheel. If you scroll down a little bit, you'll see a section marked electronics and we've got increased traction control, decreased traction control and then TC cut and then ABS, then brake bias and then engine map. Now we've set the two encoders, the two main encoders on the wheel to be encoders and not to send continuous pulses. So at the moment I've got the engine map is mapped to the left hand rotary encoder. So you can see when I rotate it anti-clockwise I'll get a a decrease engine map and if I rotate it clockwise I'd get an increase engine map. That's a lot easier in a race than looking at a wheel and trying to figure out exactly where it's set to. And now I'm demonstrating ABS which is the right hand rotary encoder. What can go wrong when people are setting this up is if we scroll a lot further down on this window, keep going down, keep going down, keep going down, you'll reach this section and you'll see there's this option here to set TC to value 0, TC to value 1, 2, 3 etc through to 12, then ABS, then TC cut and then finally engine map. These options at the end are designed for when you've got your rotary encoder set to either constant or pulse and what you'll find is if you've got your rotary encoder set to encoding and not to constant, if you try and use these maps you'll get really erratic settings. So don't use these settings, is my recommendation. Leave it on encoder, leave it so that when you turn the rotary encoder you either increase or decrease, rather than try and go to specific mapping settings. Thanks for watching, I hope you found this video useful. Please leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more. See you on the track.